And we're good to go. Well, welcome. I'm Dr. Tricia Seymour. And I'm Dr. Rusty Barrier. And what are we talking about tonight, Trish? We are talking about reincarnation and archetypes. Hmm, that sounds interesting. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. How about what we start with is uh, centering. So we've all had busy days. We've all had lots going on. So we're just going to take a moment. Am I doing this or you? You're doing it. Okay, me. good. We're going to take a moment. <laughs> you see how well we coordinate. And just kind of feel the chair. Kind of be present. So get comfy. Take a couple slow, deep breaths in the nose. And you can go out through your mouth. Just let your shoulders fall as you breathe slowly. And bring your attention to your body. Feel where there might be some stress or tension and just kind of wiggle and let it relax. Just keep breathing slowly. Letting go of the day, all the stress, anything in your life except this present moment. So be right here, right now. Feel the chair underneath you. And just wiggle a little bit. And breathe slowly. And allow yourself just to relax right here, right now, into the present moment. And from this space of peace and calm and presence, allow yourself to be fully in your body, fully here in the room, opening your eyes and being present to our experience tonight. So I want to say as kind of a preface to these talks that these talks are called advanced metaphysics for a reason. We're going to give a brief overview of the topic tonight is reincarnation. But we see the world very differently than most people. If you haven't figured that out yet, <laughs> you will tonight. Um, both Rusty and I, as we've mentioned before, have had experiences of going to source and being with oneness, of connecting with the all that is, of love and light in oneness. Beyond connecting, it's actually merging right. into, merging or dissolving into. into is the best way to describe that experience. The Hindus call it samadhi. Mm -hmm. We call it oneness. The Buddhists call it nirvana. And what that means is we picture it like circle and inside this circle is everything you know everything you've ever experienced everything in 3d everything in 4 5 6 20d everything in other planets ets and angels everything is right here it's in duality that's called duality yeah. anytime there's a me and a you an us and a them that's duality of that's this and the that right and from the source that doesn't exist. doesn't exist. It's not there. It simply is the undifferentiated state. So all of this exists there. It's all present there, but it's undifferentiated. It's, it's the, you know, we've all heard the story of the drop of water in the ocean. All right, and it really is that. Right now, we appear to be individuated souls, individuated beings. That's inside this game of life. There, there is no Rusty. There is no anybody out here. There's no Trisha. It's just one. And there's no words to really describe it. Right. We've talked around it a lot. Yeah, as have many other people who've had the experience. Right. Um, so <clears throat> we do our best. We still have avatars, which is what we call this, physical human Body. forms, bodies. We do our best on a regular basis, as often as possible, to stand in the precipice. Mm -hmm. So you heard a great teacher once say, in the world but not of the world, right? How do you have both and? How can you still connect to the all that is and play in the game and understand 
how to play here. And, and Carlos Castaneda <laughs> gave us a really good clue on that when he made this statement that the spiritual warrior plays the games of life as well as, if not better, than those who believe that's all there is. Mm. <laughs> right. And that is it. Once you have gotten out of duality, even if it's for that long, you realize that's not all there is. You know that it's not just the step-by-step -step waking up process. You will get different levels of this as you go through that process. But once you're there, you're there. And, and so when we do these talks, any night we do them, our plan and our goal is to shake up everything you believe in is to tell you everything that you've learned is great and it's kindergarten how do you move beyond that and it works real good in the lower levels it of does the game. and we even had we did a talk on if you haven't listened to it we did a talk on levels of consciousness and the fact that when you're in the lower levels of the game and i don't just mean 3d i mean you know still dealing with angels and archangels and all this kind of stuff and ets that's wonderful fun enjoy it enjoy yourself it's fun Play, have fun, enjoy, just know that that is a different level of what we're talking about. Doesn't mean better or worse, it's all great. Enjoy, have fun. Doesn't mean we're smarter or farther or any of that. We just mastered those levels and keep going in the game. And you can too. And that's what these talks are about. It's helping you go, that's true, yes, and that's also true. Because the reality is, every single one of you, the minute your body dies, is going to experience oneness. You are. You're no longer individuated at that moment. Now, we're going to talk, because we're talking about reincarnation, about how that happens, because we also will say that, you know, yes, there have been other times that I've had a body that was slightly different than this or did different things. Yeah, so the old paradigm, and I'll call it that, or the <clears throat> paradigm that functions in most of metaphysics. The concept of reincarnation actually comes out of Hinduism uh, mm -hmm. and different kinds of paths like that. And metaphysics has co-opted, borrowed a lot of concepts from a lot of other paths. Okay, so um, Hinduism's older, there's other, we're not going to go into all the other polytheistic religions, that's not what this is about. Hinduism as a poly polytheistic meaning multiple gods is older, Buddhism's younger, right? Buddhism just went, came from Hinduism and went, oh, let's look at it a little bit differently. Here's Buddhism, right? Metaphysics is mu very young as a religion, and we co-opted a lot of other religions. We talk about Christ consciousness from the Christian path. We talk about reincarnation and karma from both Hinduism and Buddhism. We talk about, you know, uh, the, the wheel of the wheel of karma or life from, from all of those. So we've just kind of borrowed from different places and then put them all together. I studied with a Hindu guru once that was actually very angry at metaphysics. And her comment was, metaphysicians are children and they don't want to do the hard work. They want to just touch on a bunch of little things, learn lots of information, and not do the hard work inside that's required to truly grow. And so she was less than pleasant about metaphysics. She was less than thrilled about metaphysics. So the old paradigm of reincarnation is from typically Hinduism typically and Buddhism. And Buddhism. And what that says is that you, and, and reincarnation is actually correctly termed transmigration of the soul. Yeah, that is actually what it means. Well, what we've interpreted that to mean is transmigration of an individuated soul. Of my soul. Of me. <laughs> okay, have you ever watched Third Ego. Rock? Yeah, you got it. Ego. All right. So, normally when people talk about meta metaphysics or reincarnation, <laughs> what they're saying is, I was Cleopatra. I was Merlin. King Arthur, Merlin, Merlin whoever, all right? right? Which will, by the way, the ones I just picked, other than Cleopatra, tie into the archetypes <laughs> conversation right. that's coming. And, and although I have met a few people who have been scullery maids or cleaned out stables, most people have not. 
Uh, most people want to know that they were a great king in the past, or a great princess in the past, or that they were um, a, a famous person in the past. They don't really want to know that you know they were somebody who mucked the stalls, you know, and cleaned out the chamber pots. That's not really pretty. So we really don't want to hear about those. Your ego doesn't like having to be normal, right? Horrible. right. <laughs> So we often hear people, again, I've heard some people who have said they've had those lifetimes, which is great, but we most of the time hear people when they talk about their past lives were somebody great. Or somebody or very or lots of great people. Or lots of great people. We had one person we knew who well, was pretty, pretty much, much everybody history. great in history. <laughs> yeah. Like, you were, really? She was. I don't remember all of them. Anyway. Um, uh, yeah, too many. Hiawatha <laughs> was the one that pops to mind. And, uh, right, you know. anyway. So, um, so it is interesting to see all the different variations on, on reincarnation. And again, that is the old paradigm. That is the old paradigm. That is the paradigm that your ego you, likes. That your individuated soul, that Rusty, will reincarnate again in a new body with the same personality and the same belief system. And that's not how it works. All right. What happens is, remember, from oneness, we're all one. Okay. There is no separation. There is no you. There is no me. That consciousness holds every memory of everything that has ever happened in duality. All right. Because it's the only one that was actually experiencing it. All right. So when that consciousness puts a drop back into a body, you may remember things like, oh, you know, walking on the beach at Normandy after the battle. Or you may remember being in Egypt or whatever. What it is, is it's not you. It's not an individuated soul. It's source dropping that information down into a body that source is in. This is, this is actually a very, very important message for many reasons for, for, for folks to get. One, if I am an individuated soul, and I am only an individuated soul, then I can walk up to Trish and slap her, right? And she'd feel it, right? No, I can't. Oh, sorry. Because I wouldn't care what she felt, right? There's no connection if I'm an individuated soul to an individuated soul. Mm -hmm. The minute I rise above that to touch oneness or realize that I am more than an individuated soul, I won't slap her. Because it would very much feel in slapping her would be right there. Yeah. And I recognize that. We recognize that. That's the whole point of moving beyond the standard metaphysics right now. So you mentioned archetypes. I did. So uh, archetypes for us, again, we're both uh, Psychotherapists. Right, in the psychology realm. So archetypes for us is, uh, we go back to Jungian, Jungian psychology that talks about archetypes. But what's an archetype for us, Steve? <sighs> an Why do you keep asking me these questions? Want me to answer? <laughs> no, I'll answer. Archetypes are simply generally mythological beings that exhibit traits that we want to pattern after. So the archetype of Jesus we want is something we want to pattern after. And please understand, I just said around about the way, he's a myth. Okay, what we That's believe That's a whole other subject. Whole other subject. <laughs> not going there tonight. But please hear that. So is King Arthur, so is Merlin, so are a lot of these beings that we think we might have been or can connect to. They're simply archetypes. They are still source showing us a specific perspective or a specific facet of a crystal that allows us to see and perhaps emulate that behavior. All right. Good enough? You want more? Well, I, I think um, you were sharing too. We do, we do as a collective consciousness come to the belief in these stories. You know, if you think about mm -hmm. all the stories, whether it's King Arthur and, and the Knights of the Round Table, or it's Hercules, or it's any of the gods or goddesses that we've heard mm -hmm. of over the years in different paths, and Greeks and Romans and Hinduism or whatever, uh, my, my comment is that 
I don't think anybody sitting in this room would actually believe that a guy that was truly blue, Krishna, actually walked on the planet. I don't know. But I would have a hard time believing that someone who was blue walked on the planet. Some people may believe that he actually did. He took a lot of colonial silver. <laughs> but we often will give, um, tell stories around the campfire, we'll tell stories around our tribe, we'll tell stories to explain things, right? So uh, there's thunder in the sky. So we oh. have a, a experience and we give it a attribute or we give it a name, right? Uh, the god of uh, thunder, Thor is the god of thunder. Thor. Right, he hit his hammer and he made the thunder happen. Because we don't understand thunder in our, in our history. So we make up stories to explain things that happen. And what comes out of those are sometimes archetypes. Mm -hmm. So we have the story of Hercules, strong, right? You know, uh, here to half man, half human, half, half god. god. By the way, back to that Jesus thing. There's a lot of half man, half mm -hmm. gods in mm -hmm. history. <laughs> so just saying. <laughs> That's another topic, though. <laughs> so I'm told. Um, so you have all these archetypes that we look up to, and if you were to tell me, oh, I was Hercules in a past life, I would see that as you're connecting to that energy mm -hmm. of strength, not that you literally were that being. And this is. For me personally, if I were to happen to have you under hypnosis doing a past life regression and you came up with that, my next question would be, that's wonderful, what mastery did you have at that point that you're bringing forward to now that you need? Right. Beyond that, there is, in my world, there is absolutely no reason to dig around in past lives or past life regressions unless you're bringing something back that you need right here, right now. And please be aware, whether you call it Hercules, you know, Pythagoras, whoever, uh, doesn't matter. It's still Source that's giving you that information. It's still Source giving you that information. So, imagine this. Imagine, I'm going to use the analogy you said, of the ocean, mm -hmm. right? So you see the beautiful ocean, and you see waves in the ocean. The waves are wonderful, but the waves are not separate from the ocean. You can't pull a wave away from the ocean and make it be a wave. It has to be still attached to the ocean. You take a drop of water and you drop it back into the ocean, our souls, when we pass out of this body and we go back to oneness. You take a drop of water, you drop it into the ocean. It doesn't stay a single drop, it dissipates. It becomes all the ocean. And then it brings all the knowledge of the ocean back with it. Okay, and so much like Rusty said, so how is it, and this is truth, I've met probably in our lifetimes, in this lifetime, I've met at least 10, maybe more, people who were Merlin in a past life, who are certain, 100%, I was Merlin. Well, if you were Merlin, how could you be Merlin, and how could you be Merlin, and how could you be Merlin, and by the way, Merlin wasn't, wasn't, wasn't a, a real being. being, he was from a story, he's an archetype. How is that possible? And that goes back to, it's because we can tap into, and our soul and who we are taps into the all. We are the wave on the ocean. We're not separate from the ocean. We just forget. We've just forgotten. And so what we're trying to do is help you remember. You're still a part of the ocean. You never left. You never left the ocean. You're just a wave on top of the ocean. And therefore, as you mentioned, the only reason that I would want to be someone special, maybe even multiple someones that are special in my past lives, is ego. And you realize ego is actually an acronym, by the way, right? Everyone's got one. <laughs> I like that. Edging God out. Edging God out Edging works God too. Out. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, ego's not bad. So in all of our talks we've talked about, we never say get rid of ego. Mm -hmm. I believe that ego is the key to enter the game. It's, it's the, like the ignition to start for, the car. For me, it's the user interface that comes with this body. Right. Yes. That's all it is. Right. And if we make it more than that, it's dysfunctional. But ego doesn't like that. Of course not. Part of what ego's job is is to make me special. Right? And so ego doesn't like that. We actually had the opportunity to meet with a group of people who, when we mentioned things like this to them, 
called this the second death. Mm -hmm. To go to a place where you have no ego and you have no identity would be like, oh no, that's not going to happen. Right? And they called it the second death. And they taught their followers to, to never go there. there. At all costs. Because Do not connect to oneness. Because you lose yourself. And right. when you lose yourself, that's bad. You can't lose yourself. And so and what we teach is to lose yourself is like, oh my God. I mean, it's like glorious. It is. Uh, to know that this is, is not just who I am. This is not who I am in this life, any life, other lives, doesn't matter. So now imagine, I think it's sort of freeing, to imagine that you are connected to all people who mm -hmm. have ever lived and who will ever live, who have ever had experiences on this planet, other planets, angels, whatever. You are actually connected to all of it. There is no separation. Even the non-humanoid parts. So if you want to connect to and, and feel what it was like to be a Roman emperor, go do it. You're still connected. Go do a little visualization and be a Roman emperor and figure that out. And what does that bring you and how does that feel? If you want to go be a slave, go do that. Mm -hmm. Do it in your visualization. You can experience any lifetime of anybody you want when you're connected because you are connected. And that's what I would encourage you to do. So rather than saying, ooh, this is me, I'm all these people, I've had these lifetimes, and, and please know over the years people have told Rusty and I a lot of different uh, lifetimes that we've had, <laughs> lots of different people, <laughs> and we just go, thank you very much, and smile and go, I can connect to whatever I want. Mm -hmm. I can be whoever I want, whenever I want. It's just, it's all source. Now, I do do seances. You do. And people ask, how's that work? <laughs> well, how does that work? I, I can tell you my thought on how Go that for works. It, and then okay, I'll tell you pretty simple. For me, there are there's radio waves all around us. Okay, we don't see them, we don't hear them unless we tune into them with a specific device. Yeah, it's literally radio waves. Radio waves all around. Little us right radio now. waves. <laughs> um, when a being, when a soul goes, remembers it's one, and goes back into oneness, there is still the memory of that soul like a radio wave transiting around, right? Seances, you're just tapping in to that frequency and allowing that essence to communicate. Mm -hmm. That's my version of it. It would be like, uh, along those same lines, what I would say is, it would be like I had a old-fashioned antenna, you know, and I was going to find the station, and I wanted to listen to old uh, I Love Lucy shows. They're still in the ether. I mean, they're still running around. <laughs> and so I just get my antenna, and I have to put it where I need to go to pick up old I Love Lucy shows. And then if you've ever been in a seance, what you know is that um, the person comes through for me very mm -hmm. much the way they were when they walked on the planet then source is there as well and that's where you see the love come in and any mm -hmm. shift or change mm -hmm. in that being i don't believe that i'm actually talking to a being that is still standing there even though i will see them standing there it is more like a radio wave say what a holograph yeah more like a holograph it's more like uh, a vision of them from, and then again, uh, evidential mediumship says, and here's what here's some things about their life because their story is still here, right? Their 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 radio wave is still here. Here's some things about their life so that you know I'm connecting with that energy that was them. Does that make sense? So it's a little bit different. Again, we look at things a little bit differently than most people do. So. Um, Somebody said one time to me, they actually asked and said, well, what about people who are like doing mediumship and they're talking to Abraham Lincoln? Hasn't he reincarnated already? The answer would be yes and, right? So if, re if Abraham Lincoln dies, he goes back to oneness, his pattern is still here as a radio wave. I can connect to that pattern of who he was when he walked on the planet. And Source is still talking through that, so we can have that combination. Yet, the essence of who he was went back to the ocean. 
and will come back in a drop sometime else in the game. Not Abraham Lincoln specifically, but 10 people can be Abraham Source Lincoln. Source will reappear be with Lincoln. those memories right. somewhere else. And that's okay. And by the way, you just gave a very good hint as to what duality is. It is the holodeck in Star Trek. Mm -hmm. It's all any of this is. It's a hologram. It's not real. It is simply photons that appear to be shaped, formed into shapes. So when you realize that we are really all still connected, when you realize that we're really all just still uh, waves on the ocean, and the ocean is where we're still all really connected, it helps you come to a place of understanding, I want to love you because I love me, because I love you. I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to steal from you. I want to be ethical. I want to be nice to you because you're me. And, and every, you know, and, and what happens is some people forget that. They forget the connectedness. And, and if it's the other way around and you hurt me, I don't want revenge on you because I'm getting that revenge on myself. I'm harming myself with my unforgiveness. I'm harming myself with my anger, with my hurt, with whatever. And I apologize because I think I've gone into the next topic. Probably. <laughs> But that's okay. And you wanted to take a break. Well, we can take a break. We can do a little Q&A and a we can, do a little, we can do a quick Q&A. want to turn it off and come back? Or? No, I don't think so. I okay. haven't been that long. All right, yeah, it's only been 20 minutes so far. So. so so, on the topic, so not on any other topics, but on the topic of reincarnation and archetypes, do you have any questions on that topic? Yes, sir. Uh, the idea that as oneness, there's no such thing as time, it's it's all. Mm -hmm. And so reincarnation still implies 3D terms. Mm -hmm. How do you reconcile that? You are correct. In oneness, there is no, <laughs> there is no time factor. All right? But remember, you have both oneness and duality. And they're not separate. Duality is like a little carve-out inside of oneness. All right? So there's no real... There's no real differentiation, but in the game, it appears there's it time. Appears there's time. But we know there isn't. Are you a, are you a video gamer at all? I have historically. Okay. <laughs> so so you know that you're in that game, and I'll just you know I don't I'm not generic. a gamer. So generic. generic game, but you're in there, and there's this you're monster. Just <laughs> huh? You're just in it. Yeah, you're in it, but you're not. Mm -hmm. You realize that you're sitting here holding these controls, so your avatar in there is dealing with game time. Mm -hmm. I only have so many seconds to get to this treasure before this guy over here shoots me. Mm -hmm. right. That's here. All right. Oneness, there's no guy shooting us, there's no treasure. The, the, I, I, I always hesitate on saying this. There's nothing there. Oneness is no thingness. There is no up, there is no down, there is no left, there is no right, there is no me, there is no you. The best way to put that for those of you who remember your English classes was there is no subject-object relationship. There simply is no subject and no object. But even time, so even time. inside the game, even the time you know, inside time. the game and game time is, is relative. You guys have traveled, maybe you're from other countries, you know there's time zones, right? Sure. And they're different. I went to, I flew to Australia, and when I came back from Australia, I came to uh, LA. LA. I flew back from Australia to LA and then back here. Got home the day before she left. I got home before I left, <laughs> right? So I got home before I left Australia. I used to joke and say, hey, can you send me the lottery numbers, right? But <laughs> since they're day, day different. But if you look up right now, they're talking a lot about Alaska and Russia, and there's a date timeline right there. I mean, literally, it's a day difference the date on the other side of that date line, so right there. It appears to be two days different. I know, and and then you can go from, you know, some places in the U.S. do half, Australia was funny, half hour time shifts. So, you know, that was different. And then you have time, you know, Time's spring, relevant. spring forward, spring back. I mean, you have, you know, yeah, so it doesn't All even the exist really stuff. here. So time but what would, is actually very relative. Mm -hmm. And then if you add in there within the game, multi-dimensions and other time things and, t you know, and all, it's, it really gives you a good mess with your head. <laughs> and, and some of us have had the experience in this dimension of 
suddenly traveling, say, 10, 15 miles in a minute mm -hmm. or a second and without even time. knowing how we got there. And literally warping time. So that happens too. So I think as far as the concept of time, whether it's, you know, again, Abraham Lincoln and we think of that as past or somebody in the future, I think, again, it's just in part, of the, part of the game, mm -hmm. part of the illusion of the game. The that ego loves that. time, by the way, because it creates a sense of urgency. And the ego wants everything to be urgent. Got to move forward. Got to do this. Got to, got to. And oh, when you're in a state of meditation, even, what time? Why are you in a hurry? I gotta hurry up and meditate. I ain't gonna happen. Five minutes. Yeah. yeah. So right. did I answer that? Yeah, but um, it you know you refer to past life regression. Yeah. Right. Implying past. So I guess what I'm referring to is oneness or from source. It would be simultaneous yes. incarnation. So there's yes. like tapping into that frequency. If there's an archetype that we could connect to that resonates Correct. for that person, Yes. then is that essentially what, yes. what you're doing in that process? Yes. It's not you're not going back in time. You're not no. going forward in time. You're just in it's a energetic sense. resonance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What are they, there's a book called A Course in Miracles. I don't know if you're familiar with that or not. I've heard of it. Not ready yet. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about another topic, but anyway. Um, Course in Miracles makes the statement that a miracle collapses time. All right? That's all it does, is it collapses time. All right? So we've all done that. Think about some point that you've been really engrossed in a conversation with someone that you're really interested in or enjoy being around, and all of a sudden you look down at your watch and it's three hours have gone. And you're going, oh, no, it feels like five minutes. But in any flow state, is yes. a miracle. Yes, <laughs> any flow state is a miracle. Correct. The miracle is that the ego got out of the way long enough for you to get in the flow state. Mm. Yep, yep. Any other questions about reincarnation? Yes. I mean, I have a question based on you saying earlier that you've both experienced source, and yes. I take it you mean in this lifetime in these human forms? Yes. yes. So I was wondering if you could elaborate on uh, what the experience was? Is it meditation or no? <laughs> Spontaneous. It's spot. Yeah. For me, the first time I was somewhere between four and seven years old, I was out in my granddad's, my grandparents' side yard, and I was spinning, just spinning and spinning. I loved to spin as a kid. Still love to spin. All right. Well, y'all come to my breath groups. You don't see me. I'm spinning down the middle while y'all are breathing away. <laughs> Uh, and all of a sudden, I was just, I spirit was gone. I was just, there was no tree, there was no yard, there was no sky, there was no nothing. There was no thing. I have no idea how long that happened. When I came back, my body, I came back to the body, still spinning, hadn't fallen down, wasn't asleep, still spinning, still going. And it, that's how I got there. All right. I've had other times, you know, because that set me off on a lifetime and an adventure of what are altered states uh, and what can you do with them. I and think the one that you would probably be most relative, relative, relevant, relevant would be um, would be the one on the car with your ex and the trees and nature. Uh, yeah, that's okay. don't do that while you drive. Yeah, <laughs> try not to do it while you're driving. Not that you have any control over this, by the right. way. Uh, what she's talking about is it was my former wife. Uh, we were in a nature preserve in Missouri. And, you know, we were driving along. And I just kept feeling this sense of peace just descending and descending and descending. And I was feeling calmer. I'm the one driving. And all of a sudden, I realized the car's not moving. I'm sitting stop. I'm looking out across a meadow with this beautiful forest in, in you know, the other side of the meadow. And then, in that case, it was very different because now suddenly I'm feeling the wind blow through me. There's no resistance. I'm feeling the tree. I'm feeling the birds. It's all, I'm part of all of it. Okay, so I'm still individuated at that point. So uh, this one to me is more like I'm sort of standing on that uh, event horizon 
but I haven't crossed quite into oneness. It's the step towards oneness. You begin to feel that intense connection. There is still no separation. I couldn't have told you where I began, the air, be and the air began and ended, I, where I ended and the tree began. I couldn't, there was not that kind of differentiation, but there was still a consciousness of me, right? When I've gone to oneness, there's no me. There is no I. There just isn't. I know that's a scary thing to try and imagine. <laughs> um, my, what about like parallel lifetimes and multi-dimensional beings. Like, sure. How do you explain that part? Okay. Is there more than one of them? Well, like like when we live parallel lifetimes or like when we live a multi-dimensional. Sure, you know, but I'm, I want you to hear my question. I'm yeah. not calling on names, so please mm -hmm. understand that. But is there more than one Which in parallel? One? Parallel, multi, that's both, that's more than one, yes? Mm -hmm. You're still in the game when that's happening. Mm -hmm. You can, uh, y yes, you can cross reference across lifetimes and across dimensions if you want to, all right? Uh, but the important thing to remember is when you're doing that, you're in the game. You're not out of the game. It's still in the illusion. Mm -hmm. You're still in that fully immersive video game that we call life. So there so, is no, no problem with that. No. That still fits in the paradigm of the game and playing. And so <clears throat> you can play in how many ever dimensions you want to play in, because even dimensions are still part of the game. Right. And you can have as many lifetimes as you want. I know uh, one of the people here um, talks about 144. And that no, you're 144,000. 144,000. And that you're 144,000. You're currently in 144,000 different dimensions playing your your lives out. Your lives out. Right and now. Right now in this moment. This moment. So sure, why not? <laughs> right. Um, one, I of the, do, um, one of the interesting things is as you move up in consciousness, you understand that it's all allowable. It's all possible. Mm -hmm. Probable may be a different question. Why not? You know, yeah, um, it's all possible. I don't want to be bored, do you? Right. So I can make up whatever I want. Right. I was a kid. I made up fantasy. I did all kinds of stuff, right? Imaginary friends, all kinds of stuff. Why not? Why not? Just have fun. Right. <coughs> you had asked both of us, so I'll tell you real quick. My story's a little longer, but I will give you the very, very, very cliff noted version. So I had been studying with a Hindu guru. Um, and just got in Shakti Pot. Got in Shakti Pot a couple years before, I think. But anyway, um, uh, <clears throat> uh, which is a kundalini awakening, and had had that happen, and uh, uh, was taken out of my body at that time too. Um, knew that I'd already gotten into a lot of metaphysics, was already channeling, writing, hearing dead folks, doing all kinds of stuff still as a psychotherapist. Um, and I knew that something was going to happen, and I was afraid of it. I didn't know what it was. So I called a friend of mine, not me, and said before him, and said, "Can you come <coughs> to my apartment and sit with me? I don't know what's going to happen, but I would like somebody to witness it." <laughs> and so he said, "Sure." And we both went down in on like lotus positions on the floor, and I was pulled out of my body. And for me, I had a, um, I'll call it a visualization. So I had lots of things happen. I went down a path. I saw all these great beings. I saw what my church in the past would have taught as heaven, um, beautiful mansion, and I was guided by the masters that you, we would say are the masters of, of all faiths. And then <clears throat> I saw another door and I asked what was out there. And they said, oh, you want to go out there? That's beyond this. It's beyond what you've been taught. And I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> of course I want to go out that door. No, I'm going to say, no, I'm going to stay right here. No, I want to go out there. So um, <clears throat> I was taken. Uh, still very much me, and I was uh, taken out the door, and I saw a big field, and in this field were lots of shapes, like like beings, like energy beings, and all this time through this entire experience, I was told we are one, we are one, we're not separate, we're one, and I get out this door to this beautiful field, and I see all these separate beings, and I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> you just told me, you've been telling me all this time that we're one, we're, we're separate. Light forms. Light forms. Light beings. 
And I said, all this time you've been telling me we're all one, then what is this? This is, it looks like separation still. <coughs> and I then was shown, and then what happened was, after some laughter probably, I'm sure, was everything merged together into one big light. And for me it was light. Sometimes when I go there it's dark, sometimes it's light, sometimes it's, it's different. I was engulfed in this light of oneness and at that moment there was no Trisha. There was no me. I had no body, I had no soul, I had no essence, I had no awareness. All I had, all I felt, all it was was an overpowering, I hate to say the word love, because everybody has different connotations with that, but it was just just a unconditional, oh my God, I'm home. Unconditional acceptance. Just unconditional acceptance, like this is it. And, and I literally have no idea how much time passed, because I wasn't. Right. I literally wasn't. Trisha did not exist. At some point, I heard a voice, because I didn't hear anything in there. Literally, it was all one. Gorgeous, wonderful, like, oh my God, can I stay? <laughs> and I heard a voice that said, it's time to go back. And I said, no. I said, no, I'm staying here. This is great. <laughs> I'm not going back. Please no, I had a good life. It wasn't that. But this is like way beyond anything I'd ever experienced. And I'm like, nope, I'm staying. And then I heard, no, you have to go back. And I'm like, nope, not happening. <laughs> Make me. And I heard, no, it's, it's, you got to go back. And the only reason I agreed finally, and I probably would have come back to my body anyway, but the only reason that I agreed finally was I was told I could go back there anytime I wanted. Mm -hmm. That I could stay connected to the oneness, even in duality. Otherwise, I would never have agreed. And so I... Um, uh, found myself back in my body, back sitting. The guy across from me who was there to keep me safe was sound asleep. He couldn't handle the energy. He was out. <laughs> I woke him up and went, like, how long has that been? Like five minutes? Five hours? I have no idea because there's no time, right? He's like, I got no idea. I just, as soon as you left, I was out. <laughs> and so and I didn't look at a clock, so it didn't matter. But it was an experience that stayed with me the rest of my life. And I can get, I can touch it again when I meditate. I do my best to be there on a daily basis and to connect with that. But it was life changing because I realized that's what's real, right. not this. Did I answer your question? Hey, and neither one of us cried. Hey, we're getting better. <laughs> we normally cry when we go there because it's just so bad. You're not really looking into my eyes. <sighs> either, so. No. So. Um, so that, the, thank you for asking. That's yeah. again, short versions, but at least you know a little more about us. So when we talk about oneness, that's what we talk about. We're talking about coming from that space. Yeah, yeah. But we know that our avatar, my avatar is sitting in this chair right here on this day, talking to this camera, having this talk with you. Um, just finished dinner, right? I'm gonna probably go have some chocolate later because I like chocolate. I mean, my avatar still is in the game and still here and playing. But the flip side of that is, we know that. We absolutely are aware this avatar is talking to that avatar and that avatar. But we also 100% understand this is source talking to source. There's no you, there's no me. That's why when I'm working with someone, I don't care what they did in their life. All right, I have worked with no judgment. people who are murderers. All right, I worked with you know, some of them were sanctioned murderers because they were special forces. All right, but they kill people. I don't care. I'm just God talking to God. That's it. Okay. All right, I think we're going to wrap this topic up. Take a short little break and come back. Stretch, wiggle. <laughs>